It's down to the surf south coast for the first fixture of the new year. Brighton at home to Chelsea at the Amex. Uh, the fixture earlier in the season went Chelsea's way 2-0 in September. Team news. Uh, Reese James was uh, left back for Chelsea and Pulisic was restored. Uh, uh, Kovacic on the bench. Uh, Brighton just about at full strength. Uh, and uh, to the action then, a frantic start. Both sides giving the ball away far too easy. And then Al Zatak uh, had a strike which was just deflected wide on six minutes. Rhys James uh, was looking threatening on the overlap uh, and uh, 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 from one of those uh, a, a corner resulted and from the corner uh, Zuma at the far post headed it back across Cole. Uh, Abraham managed to get to it, he turned and shot and it was parried out but Aspilicueta a couple of yards out couldn't miss and so Chelsea were one up. And they continued to look menacing down the right with William and James. Uh, and the crosses uh, that came in were frantically pushed clear by the Brighton defence. Uh, a little later, Abraham stole the ball from uh, Montoya, but uh, he didn't pass it to William and the, his shot was deflected for a corner. Uh, Brighton... Poor quality from them really, considering how good they looked against Bournemouth. Kept on losing possession uh, and Chelsea hadn't, hadn't had to work too hard to really be in front. Uh, and so, uh, although Kepa strambled an effort away on 34 minutes, um, the chances really for Brighton were few and far between. Uh, on 42 though, Mopay did set up Prosser, uh, who brought a save from Kepper, uh, but Montoya's Toya's follow up was way off target. So that was 1-0 at the break then, into the second half, and Cunningham uh, was on for Vizuma for Brighton. 54 minutes, Chelsea again confident on the ball, had a couple of efforts off target. And uh, Brighton still couldn't get in any the momentum. Moy was a mere shadow of the player that we saw uh, in, against Bournemouth. I really couldn't get into the action at all and was very ineffective. Uh, Canty had a strike on car target, but Ryan was comfortable. That was on 66 minutes. And then uh, Trossard on the break got the crowd on their feet. Uh, but uh, it was uh, uh, thwarted. And then uh, some Chelsea pressure from uh, 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 was foiled by Alzata blocking a James shot. Uh, subs were introduced uh, and uh, Hudson and Dodoy came on for Polisic. Uh, and then on 70, uh, 79 minutes, Conley had a shot, but a great save from Kepper. Then, uh, a couple of minutes later, Kovacic uh, fouled Trussard on the edge of the box on the left side. And uh, uh, it, th there was a, 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 an opportunity uh, which looked like a training ground move, but it came to nothing. But then, uh, finally, after Jahanbach had come on, uh, in on 83 minutes, uh, a speculative cross uh, managed to get to him, and oh, he, 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 he managed to get a brilliant overhead kick to the ball, and it went past Kepa, and uh, let Brighton were level. An uh, absolutely gem of a goal, and so this young guy from Iran had now got two in two. Uh, so leveled up 1 1, and after that, uh, Brighton did look like they might well snatch a winner, but it wasn't to be. Uh, a shot inside the box from Mope Bay was battered away by Kepper, and we reached the final whistle. And uh, Brighton, having uh, turned the game round, had managed a 1 1 draw with Chelsea. So to Turpmore then, Burnley at home to Aston Villa. Aston Villa in the bottom three, desperate for a win. Burnley, their form's been a bit shoddy of late. Villa hadn't won at Turfmore since 1959. Um, 
but they did have Mings back, the uh, England defender, after his hamstring problems. And on 11 minutes, uh, Grealish headed in a cross, uh, giving Pope no chance. But VAR interviewed, and apparently the provider, Wesley, had uh, a heel offside. So it was, uh, it was overturned. But 27 minutes, some neat combination play involving Wesley and Grealish led to the big man uh, finishing neatly. Although Pope could have done a little bit better. Uh, so that was 1-0 to Villa. And then on 41 minutes, uh, probably the best goal I've seen of, of, of the day. It was from Grealish. He really is a talent. And he uh, uh, hit the corner to put Villa 2-0 up at the break. Into the second half, Rodriguez came on uh, to bolster Burnley's attack, but he failed to connect on a Tarkovsky cross early on inside the box. Uh, but uh, eventually on 80 minutes, Burnley did get on the score sheet, and this was Wood, who headed in at the back post, uh, f f catching heat now a little bit. But it wasn't enough. Villa managed to get to the final whistle. His final score at Turf Moor then was Burnley 1, Aston Villa 2. So, to the Etihad then, the champions Manchester City at home to the improving Everton. Foden started for City and uh, Coleman was back in at, at Andinia for Everton. So they looked much stronger at fullback. First half action, Sigurdsson chipped a, a, a neat ball to Coleman, whose uh, shot was tipped over by Bravo, still deputising for Edison. Then on 12 minutes, uh, City took the lead. Canelo uh, set up Foden at the far post, and it was a tapping. Uh, but then VAR had a look at it and reversed the decision. There was a, an offside heel somewhere, uh, so it remained goalless. And that's what it was at the break, but a few minutes into the second half, 51 minutes in fact, uh, Jesus, great effort, wide of Pickford's left hand, uh, and it was 1-0 to City. Calvert-Lewin went close after that, but uh, Jesus, who was looking uh, lightning hot, on 56, uh, he got his uh, second. This was with his other foot, his left. The first was with his right. And it was just as impressive from a corner. And that was 2-0 to City. Richarlison managed to get peg one back uh, a little later, latching onto a wall, wall cross shot uh, that was deflected. And so that was 2-1. Good performance by Everton, but not quite good enough. Manchester City took this game by two goals to one. So to St James's Park, then Newcastle at home to Leicester. Muto was in from the start from Newcastle. Carroll on the bench. Uh, Vardy, we, he didn't play, wasn't on the vents. He's got a, a calf strain, apparently. Uh, it's probably fatigue. And uh, once the game got started, Dubrovka certainly earned his uh, uh, paycheck. Um, he managed to thwart uh, an Evans header early on, following a corner. And uh, up the other end, Joe Linden had a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, but eventually uh, Smichael managed to get a little bit on it, and he touched it onto the bar. So Linton still without a, without a goal for well two or three minutes I believe 36 minutes though Perez playing against his old club gave Leicester the lead uh, and uh, this followed uh, a mistake by Lejeur uh, and it was intercepted by uh, Perez uh, just outside the box and he accepted the gift and so Leicester were one up a few minutes later they doubled their lead Madison a left foot rocket of a shot, again uh, giving De Brogge no chance. So that was the score at the break, 2-0 to Leicester. Um, by this time, uh, Bruce had uh, had to make a number of substitutes, uh, some injuries, and we started the second half, and then within a minute, Shah went down with a hamstring problem, 
and uh, because Bruce had used up his three subs, Newcastle had to continue with ten men for the best part of 40 minutes. Well, they didn't do too bad, but uh, on 55 minutes, uh, another great strike from Madison. Uh, Dubrovka managed to palm it away, and uh, then... Uh, another opportunity uh, uh, for Perez and Inanacho and Dubrovka made a double save. He was certainly working uh, very hard to keep the score respectable. But on 87 he couldn't do anything about Chaudhry's uh, long range effort from the edge of the box. And uh, I, this followed good build up play on the left. And so it flew in the net, hitting the bar as it went in. And that was the, uh, the third goal. Final score at Newcastle was uh, Newcastle nil, Leicester 3. Brief highlights then of Norwich against Crystal Palace. Uh, Norwich right at the bottom of the pile. Uh, Palace still performing pretty well. Cantwell was back for uh, the Canaries. Uh, Palace were unchanged, but that was because uh, they've got so many players injured. And uh, it seems that injuries are really hitting all sides after this punishing run of matches. And that it was Cantwell who latched on to uh, a Gwendia shot that ricocheted to him on four minutes to prod the ball past Gaeta to give Norwich the uh, lead. Uh, a little bit later, there was chaos in the defence, uh, 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 Norwich defence that is, and Zimmerman managed to thwart a Palace attack uh, to keep it at 1-0. That was about it for the first half. Into the second half, Gwendia uh, forced a great save from Gaeta uh, early on, and uh, uh, then he had a header uh, from a corner. And uh, uh, Ranchitz couldn't put the, the final touch away. Uh, there was a, an effort for uh, Milanovic. He hit the bar. But on, uh, finally on 85, Zahar had been relatively quiet. Uh, he got to the byline. And his cross was turned home by Wickham, uh, who'd come on as a sub. And originally the def decision was offside. Uh, uh, but when we had a look at it, meaning VAR, they reversed the decision and awarded a goal. So Palace had got the game back on level 1-1. Uh, and that's how it finished. Norwich won. Christopher so just in Mary's then, Southampton at home to Spurs. It's pretty chilly down there on the south coast. Uh, Southampton won the last uh, fixture at St Mary's uh, last season. Uh, and they're three games unbeaten here, four wins in the last seven. So reasonably good form. Um, not so Spurs, really. Erratic results, no clean sheets. And looking for improvement. Uh, Gennepri was in from the start for Saints. Uh, uh, Sessegnor at left back. That's, I think, the third game he's been there. And uh, let's see. We th 300 appearance for Ericsson for Spurs. Into the action. Uh, early on, Cedric had a header at the far post, but it went wide. On five minutes, Sir uh, Kane... Uh, speculative shot from just uh, outside the box but it, it was deflected deflected for a corner and then on 12 minutes uh, Redmond uh, rushing into the box gets his shot away and it fumbled by Casanegra but uh, he managed to get the second effort cleared for the corner and then on 17 minutes uh, Saints uh, took the lead a lovely ball over the top found Ings, he brought it down and uh, clipped it over uh, the Tongan's head and his left foot shot, shot hit the corner and he was put Saints ahead, 1-0. That's his 13th of the season, becoming a bit of a sharp suit shooter, Danny Ings. Uh, after that, Ericsson had a free kick effort which went off the wall for a corner. Uh, but Southampton was still getting the better of things, winning second balls. Uh, 
uh, and then uh, a problem for Spurs and Ndombele had to be uh, replaced by La Celso uh, looked like a possible hamstring uh, and then 30 minutes it was clear that uh, Spurs just weren't creating anything uh, McCarthy untroubled really a minute later Redmond uh, connects with an Armstrong uh, across but Aldevero's leg uh, uh, took the effort uh, uh, over the crossbar. Uh, lucky escape for Spurs there. And five minutes later, uh, another Ericsson free kick found Kane, but he was offside. Uh, 37 minutes then, uh, a sharp strike by Kane was spilled by McCarthy, but his second effort, he managed to push it clear of, uh, 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 of Ali running in. Uh, and then Ericsson again, corner, uh, found Vertonghen, who was just a few yards out, but somehow he managed to uh, push his effort over the bar. It was a poor miss, really. A minute before the break, Spurs did uh, seem to be more threatening, but La Salsa had an effort where it was tame, and uh, so we got to half-time, 1-0. Uh, Second half wasn't quite as... Uh, good as the first to be honest uh, Redmond though had a ch shot a volley uh, well, went well wide just straight from the kick off uh, and then on 51 Spurs on the break 4 against 3 but more of uh, a final ball to uh, Ali and his cross was poor uh, Spurs still struggling uh, and then Janepro, who picked up a slight knock, he was replaced by Long. And on 65 minutes, uh, a period of uh, sustained pressure from Spurs, but no final telling pass. And at that, this day, still no shot at all in the second half. On 68 minutes then, uh, a tame header from Vertonghen, but no problem for McCarthy. And then on 72 minutes, uh, ball floated in for Spurs, uh, and Kane anticipated and he converted it, but he was ruled offside and he also pulled his hamstring, so he was off, replaced by Lamella. Uh, 85 minutes, a uh, Warprowse corner, he had really not been in the game, but he found Long, uh, who headed fractions wide. Uh, 86 minutes, a bit of pandemonium in Saints' bo uh, box, and Mora's effort was deflected wide. Uh, we had five minutes of stoppage time, uh, but overall, Spurs really not get their act together. Um, their passing was poor. So we reached the final whistle. Uh, Saints had a clean sheet, which is a very rare event down at St. Mary's. Final score, Southampton won. West Ham at home to Bournemouth. Both teams needing something. Uh, dire form from both. Moyes, of course, the new manager. He's got an 18-month contract. Uh, he'd only be with the team a couple of days. Um, so uh, he didn't have a great deal of influence on what happened on the pitch and he admitted that in the interview. Bournemouth, uh, just above the drop zone, uh, really suffering from injuries and West Ham took the game by the throat and on 17 minutes their captain Noble on the edge of the box uh, after uh, uh, Anderson had uh, done some neat work and fed Snodgrass. Snodgrass cross came along and uh, to uh, Noble and he hit a smooth effort that went in the f uh, corner. Uh, Ransdale uh, was unable to uh, get uh, anywhere near it, wrong footed. It's 1 0 to West Ham. And uh, they added quickly to that on 25 when Snodgrass was involved again. And he set up Haller, who hit a superb volley uh, on the sort of uh, twisting as he connected. And it sailed past uh, the Bournemouth keeper. And that was 2-0 for West Ham. And 33 minutes, uh, a, a, another disaster for Bournemouth. Noble marauding into the box and he got clipped. Penalty awarded. He uh, he stepped up himself to convert, and that was three nil. And uh, they looked good for it 
um, Palace had hardly uh, been in uh, the West Ham half as we approached half time. Second half then, and uh, uh, on 66, Anderson was far too quick for the Bournemouth captain, Francis, and slid the ball past uh, the goalkeeper, and that was 4 0. Uh, shortly after that, uh, Cresswell, uh, a rather stiff challenge on Fraser, he was shown a red card. But VIR had a look at it and they uh, changed it to yellow. Uh, Solanke had a, a, a chance when he heads onto, headed onto the post. Uh, but a final effort by Lanzini could have made it five on 82, but Ramsdale was there to thwart that. So a depressing day for Eddie Howe. Final score at West Ham, uh, a very pleased David Moyes, 4-0 uh, to West Ham. So to Vicarage Road then, Watford against Wolves. Uh, Watford, they've had a good uh, patch of form recently and seem to be creeping away from the bottom. Uh, certainly uh, Nigel Pearson has made a big impact on this group, as uh, has uh, Troy Deeney. Wolves, well, lots of good things to talk about Wolves in 2019. Uh, team news, Craig Dawson was in for the suspended Marappa. Uh, Dini, three goals in three uh, up front. For Wolves, four changes from the uh, uh, fixture against Liverpool. Uh, Triori and uh, uh, Jimenez were back. And uh, uh, also in was Doherty. Uh, early action, Watford uh, were using the right flank and Saar looked like he had the beating of the fullback and was becoming an attacking threat. Uh, for Wolves, uh, slow start but uh, eventually Traore on 11 minutes managed to beat two uh, defenders but his final pass was poor, that was on 8 minutes. Uh, 12 minutes, a great diagonal through ball by Cody finds Doherty, but his effort was blocked by Foster. Foster once again having a strong game for Watford. Uh, on 15, then, uh, Jimenez gets between two defenders from a Dendonka chip, but misses the target. And then for Mania, 17 minutes, uh, tantalising cross for Watford, but no touch from any front men. Neto was looking lively on the left flank for Wolves. He was brought down, but the ref said no, uh, no free kick. That was on 23 minutes. And then two minutes later, he fell in the box, and it looked uh, a possible penalty, but the referee gave him a yellow for diving. Uh, on 28 minutes, uh, Sars effort was easy for Patricio, but then on 29 minutes, uh, Ding Dolka gave the ball away in midfield to Saar, uh, and uh, Zah uh, managed to uh, set up De, De La Feo on the left flank, and as he does, he drifts inside, he hit a sweet curling right foot shot past Patricio, and that was 1-0 to the Hornets. 36 minutes... Uh, uh, some more, another good move on the eye. Uh, this time, uh, Delafayo couldn't make a good contact. Uh, 41 minutes then, Triori, some magical feet, but uh, Diacori brought him down. And uh, then, on one minute into added time, uh, Dini set up Saar, uh, but his effort w w went wide uh, and hit the side netting. So, 1 0 at the break. Uh, into the second half then, and uh, Neto again causing problems, outpacing Cathcart, but his strike on 46, 47 minutes was a poor one. And then on 48 minutes, De Curry, uh managed to uh, double Watford's lead. Uh, a Jalavar was involved, and he uh, got the fed the ball to Delafeo, who set up to Corey, and his de deflected shot hit the top corner, uh, left of Patricio. Uh, so Wolves surprisingly two down, but Watford being very resourceful, um, Wolves with it all to do. A uh, Troyer had a, a jinking ring. Uh, run, sorry, and he laid it off to Martino, but his effort was off target. 
And then a speculative uh, shot from uh, Neto on 59 had a huge deflection of Cavasali and it went past uh, Foster and so they were back in it 2-1. So after that, momentum with wheels, uh, Watford on the back, back foot, Jota come in, came on for Neto and uh, Cavasali uh, uh, managed to pull back Jota near the box and uh, was issued a yellow card but then VAR had a look at it and they informed the ref that it should be a red so he was off and Watford were down to 10 well uh, Delafeo was then sacrificed for another defender and it was all all, all pumps to the station after that uh, Foster uh, came into his own of course great save on 77 and uh, another effort from Vinegra went well wide um, constant pressure from Wolves but they just couldn't break, break down the Watford stern defence so we hit the full time whistle and Watford had done it again final score at Vicarage roll in Watford 2 Wolves 1 so to the Emirates then the last uh, match on New Year's Day and Arsenal against Manchester United. Of course, uh, team news first. Pepe was back in the starting lineup for Arsenal along with Socrates and Kalasnis. Um, United, they had Juan Bazaka back and Shaw and Lingard. Uh, no Pob, uh, not even on the bench. Apparently, his ankles are uh, uh, causing more trouble. And. Solskjaer hinting that uh, he may need surgery um, but uh, nevertheless he's not involved um, and Arsenal uh, after the initial exchanges took a grip on 8 minutes a Kolasnic uh, run down the left across from the byline and Pepe was unmarked in the penalty box and swept the ball past De Gea for 1-0 and Pepe uh, continued to look good um, and set up a, a more difficult chance for Aubameyang but his volley went well over but uh, certainly United were well under pressure at that stage and, <coughs> and Terreira had a, another effort which went just wide uh, poor clearance by De Gea and his effort went to Pepe who hit the post from distance and then uh, just before half time uh, Socrates gobbled up uh, uh, an opportunity after a De Gea save had popped back out to him and he hit it on the volley straight past the, the Spaniard and that was 2-0 to the Arsenal second half things improved a little bit for United after that dreadful first phase um, Mata came on and uh, he set up a chance uh, for uh, Pereira, not Tarera, uh, and uh, he shoots into the side netting. Greenwood also had a shot, um, but it came to nothing, uh, held by Leno. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, the game really petered out. Um, certainly, both teams were looking weary at the end, particularly Arsenal, but they held on, and uh, so they won this game comfortably by two goals to nil. So let's have a quick recap then after those nine games uh, on New Year's Day. There's still one to be played. That will be played on, on the second in the evening. Liverpool uh, entertaining. Who are they playing? Uh, this escapes me now. Um, but it's going to be a home win anyway. Uh, let me just quickly run through who that Sheffield United, of course. So, the table then. Uh, Leicester maintained their challenge uh, at, for the top, as did Manchester City. Uh, Leicester just 10 points behind Liverpool. Uh, but Chelsea, well, they're still in fourth. But the chasing pack all what, lost. Man United, Spurs and Wolves all lost. Uh, and Crystal Palace got a draw. Arsenal are up to 10th after their win against Man United. Into the bottom half. Well, it's a uh, little change other than the fact that Bournemouth have replaced 
Villa in the bottom three. Uh, Watford are just a point behind Bournemouth now in 19th. Uh, Norwich are being left behind there. Uh, on just 14 points uh, and I think it's looking very bleak for their New Year prospects. So to the goals of the day then well the Iranian Rachab Bach uh, his overhead kick has got to be a, a favourite uh, and Grealish's uh, goal, second goal for Villa was also pretty impressive uh, I'm going to give it to uh, the Iranian because you don't see too many overhead kicks uh, landing in the corner quite as effectively and majestically as that. So that's my goal of the week. The uh, final match uh, of the round, um, I will just put some brief uh, comments together in writing on my Facebook page. Uh, anyway, have a good holiday.